If this was just for Tesla owners, this would be the quickest video I've ever made. Oh, by the way, non-Tesla owners using Tesla superchargers get their own section later in this video, but a lot of the first section is relevant to you as well. For Tesla owners, drive to your chosen supercharger, reverse into your chosen bay, get out, remove the plug from the charger, press the button to open the charger port flap and plug it in. The end. Now seriously, that is one of the main reasons that Tesla superchargers are the envy of all EV owners. Simplicity. The others are reliability, uh, currently running at 99.9% .9 uptime, sheer numbers, ranging from 8 to 24 charges per charging location, power, all the charges being fitted are 250 kilowatt dedicated power chargers not shared between two bays and price currently around 40p or less off peak making them probably the cheapest charging you can find in the uk today many seven kilowatt ac chargers are dearer well tesla's approach to charging is as an extension of the car itself the chargers have no screens no controls no payment method it is just a charger and a cable with a plug on the end. Well, technically, it's not really a charger, more just a stabilised, safe power supply. The charger is in your car, your battery management system. All of the controls are done by the car and the Tesla app that comes with every Tesla car. Obviously, there's yet more. If you want to get the very best out of your charging session... When heading towards a super, supercharger, always use the sat-nav and navigate to your chosen location. It will show you occupancy rates, is it full with a queue or empty, but also navigating there also allows Tesla's built-in supercharger monitoring software to operate that can predict when you will get there and your state of charge and look at how many other cars will be heading there at around the time that you get there. You, of course, can only look at what's happening now, but if your supercharger is an hour away, you have no idea what you will find when you get there. Tesla does. Trust it, and on occasions it will divert you to a different supercharger on your original route that will be less busy or empty when you get there. Navigating there also allows the battery preconditioning to operate. Many people think this is only for the winter, but recently mine activated on a sunny day with a 21 degrees C ambient, that's about 72 Fahrenheit. A correct temperature battery pack can charge up to 25% quicker than one that is too hot or too cold. If speed and time spent charging are issues, use the sat-nav. Your Tesla app will allow you to monitor the charging session. Tesla operates an idle fee. Once your car is charged to the limit that you preset, remove your car to make way for another driver. It is common decency. If you don't, within a few minutes of completing your charging session, you will incur idle fees of around £1 per minute. And no, you can't avoid it. This idle fee will be deducted automatically from your bank account. So on completion, press the button on the plug to release the plug and place it back in the charger. Then drive off, even if only to park nearby because you haven't yet finished your lunch. Now you will see me occasionally using a Tesla adapter. My car is an older model. In the good old days, all Tesla cars and chargers used a Tesla proprietary Type 2 plug and socket that could use either AC or DC, switching automatically depending what you press put in. That is still used in the USA and is now called the North American Charging Standard, NACS. Here in the UK, around 2017-2018, Europe passed a directive that the standard was not NECS, but CCS2. And from then on, all new cars and new chargers had to have CCS2 plugs and sockets. Now, in the interim, early Tesla V2 chargers came with two cables, a Tesla NACS and a CCS2. So all Tesla cars can use all V2 chargers Without an adapter, you just select the correct cable and plug. 
All Teslas can also use the V3s, but some older cars like mine only have the NACS socket. So we need an adapter when we're charging at either a V3 with CCS or any other network charger, which also will always have CCS. Please subscribe and hit the like button if this video helps you or is enjoyable. It really does make a difference to the channel. Well, non-Tesla owners, you finally get to you. But most of the above applies equally to you. The main difference, because your car does not have the software to communicate directly with the chargers or with Tesla, you need an app. It is free to download, obviously. Download it from the Apple Store or Google or Android. It will set up an account and most importantly set up a payment method since there is no way of paying at the charger. While Tesla owners will select the charger location from the main display, you will select it from the mobile app. Open the app, navigate to charge your non-Tesla, and a map appears with suitable superchargers available to you. It is important to know that not all superchargers allow non-Teslas to charge, so these will not be shown as an option. This is a new program being rolled out and, and applies only to a limited number of superchargers where the additional traffic will not seriously delay Tesla owners. You see, your car cannot talk to the predictive software, so Tesla has no idea at all how many non-Tesla cars will turn up and when. Now, this program monitors that and will allow Tesla to roll out more superchargers in the future where it will work. It might be interesting to note that in the USA, where they still have the Tesla Type 2 proprietary plug and socket, not only will non-Teslas be factory fitted with the NACS, but most manufacturers will work with Tesla to integrate some Tesla proprietary software into their cars, their Fords, VWs, GMs, etc., or indeed may end up supplying the whole software package under license. This would then allow all of those cars to be monitored, allowing the Tesla predictive charger software to monitor all cars, Tesla or not, thereby eliminating or reducing queues. So on the app, Select the red button or orange that shows the charger you want. It also shows the number of vacancies. The details of that charger will be shown, including power and price. Plus, there'll be an option to become a member. Now, membership is purely voluntary, but does offer serious discounts. The app also gives directions and postcodes. Click charge here and you will be shown the post or charger numbers. So at this stage, you need to be there. Choose your charger and pull into the bay. On your app, select the number which is clearly displayed on the front of the charger. Open your charger port flap, get out, remove the plug from the charger and plug it in. Well, that's it. Not quite as simple, but pretty close. You can monitor the state of charge in the app. When finished, press stop charging, unlock the charging port and remove the cable. By the time you've driven away, the money for that session will already be in Tesla's account. Now, quick mention to a real issue. All Teslas have the charging point right at the back on the left-hand side. Consequently, the cables at all superchargers are designed specifically for this and are really short. If your charger port is located there, it's not a problem. If it's in the middle front or rear, it probably won't be a problem. But if it is in the front left or the right rear, you have an issue. The charge cable will not reach if you reverse into the bay. You will need to drive forward or reverse into one charger bay but then use the plug from another. This blocks up two charger bays, and as such, you will not be popular if you do this at peak times when every bay is busy. 
Please have consideration to all the other drivers trying to charge. This sharing is a courtesy so that you can use these charges. So avoid really busy peak times as much as you can if you're going to take two bays. Do not ever charge to 100%, which simply takes ages. Now, this is not having a go at non-Teslas. This, some of these all also applies equally to Teslas. Do not always charge to 100%, especially if the supercharger is very busy. Remove your car the instant it's finished. New chargers, the V4s, which are already being installed, are even more powerful and have much longer cables. And Tesla will replace all current V2s and V3s with V4s over time. Just have patience and be considerate. Well, that's ended up a longer video than I'd planned. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please subscribe so you'll be notified each time a new video is released. Also, please consider joining as a Patreon member. It costs me money to drive around and test all these charges, so a small contrib contribution can make a huge difference. Full details are at patreon.com. Dave takes it on, and I'm Dave.